recording. Um, uh, welcome everyone. So today we have an amazing uh, group of panelists uh, brought to you by Fidelity National Title and the refs for the invites. Uh, um, we are, we have uh, all the great NEPA and Sonoma County agents. Why don't we start off by going in my order that I see. Trish, why don't you introduce yourself uh, a minute to feel about what it is you do and the areas you serve. Um, I'm Trish McCall. I'm with McCall team at Keller Williams. I've been in real estate since 2003. We've been through a couple of wild scenes. So we're well experienced in crisis, and, uh, but we're pretty excited. I sell residential real estate and I run a team of five agents and we're just excited to tell you about what we think is going on in the market. Awesome. Thank you. Jerry, you're up. Hey there. Jerry Pujols with Coldwell Banker Brokers of the Valley here in Napa. We're a small family team, kind of boutique-y. We are a full service uh, operation. Been doing it for about 23, 24 years. I can't believe I'm saying that, but <laughs> we, we've seen the ups, the downs, and the sideways, and here we are, still doing it and loving it and helping people. Great, thanks, Jerry. Uh, Elizabeth, why don't you give us a little background about yourself? Alrighty, Elizabeth Alcott with Keller Williams Napa Valley. Been doing this in Napa for 18 years. Um, do full concierge service, have a full team of contractors to take it from beginning to end to help sellers update and uh, run a very small team, Elizabeth Alcott and Associates. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Craig, give us a little uh, background about yourself. Hey, good morning, folks. First and foremost, uh, I just want to express my appreciation. Honored and humbled to be a part and uh, I've worked with a number of you and uh, I'm just honored to be a part of the team here and happy to, to share thoughts. I've been at this for almost 20 years now. It's actually a second career. I used to be in account sales. I uh, got tired of driving back and forth all over California and the Pacific Northwest and decided to hunker down 20 years ago. Haven't looked back since. Um, and, and again, happy to, happy to be doing what we're doing. Great, thank you, Craig. It sounds like we have a really experienced uh, panel. This is, uh, this is pretty amazing. Uh, Kimberly. You're uh, mute. Sorry about that. Hi, everybody, and thank you all so much for participating in this mastermind today. We appreciate um, you all being here. I'm the Assistant County Manager for Fidelity National Title in Sonoma, Napa, Lake, and Mendocino counties. And uh, again, just appreciate all of you being here and looking forward to uh, participating with this panel today. Great. Thank you, Emily. Nicole, how are you? Hi, Kenny. Good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I'm Nicole Solari with Level Up Realty, um, powered by Side. I run a small, medium-sized team in Napa and Solano County, and um, just celebrated six years in the business. So I'm the young in here. I'm only 23, so I'm, I'm as old as Jerry has been doing this. <laughs> well said. I'm kidding, by the way. Kidding. Uh, Jeremy, you're up. So, sorry, distracted little one in the room. Uh, Jeremy King, I'm in Petaluma. I work with uh, my mother, Peg, and she's been doing it for I don't, longer than Jerry, twice as long as Jerry. Um, I've been doing it for 15, 16, 17 years. I forget. No, thanks. And uh, we've got a, we're, we're partners and we've got a team of three and a half, three full-time, a couple other um, part-timers and uh, we try to stay in Petaluma and, and run the town. Awesome. Thanks Thank for you. having us. And last but not least, at least currently on the panel, uh, Christy. Hey, Christy, your uh, camera isn't working. Good morning, everyone. I know I'm having trouble with my camera. I tried to fix it once, but I'm just going to be glad to be here. Thanks uh, for the invite. I've been licensed since 2001. And um, before I did real estate, I was in HR and safety and compliance. Um, Started doing real estate full time about six years ago, and love it. Um, I love, you know, obviously helping the community. I work all of Sonoma County and do some Marin as well. I work with Vanguard Properties, and um, just currently have a team um, and one assistant. So, great, thank you, Christy. Uh, let's get started with one of our first questions. Like, I mean, we've been in shelter in place. I think roughly fifty ish days now. Someone correct me if we're in the wrong realm. Um, like. How has business been much different from now than it was uh, prior, right, right at shelter in place? Uh, Chrissy, why don't you start off? 
Well, a lot more paperwork um, just to show homes, um, but things I think are still happening. People that are working, I've closed three deals. Um, I closed three deals in March and closing one this month. Um, I just think the uncertainty is causing people to take a little more time, but the people that are serious um, are actually out there still buying homes with safety precautions in place. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, any, anyone else? What I've been seeing is um, that we're more, we've shifted back into what is the quasi winter market. So there are serious buyers out there. Deals are transacting. Um, yes, a little more complicated for every time you enter, you have to use a PEDS form. Um, overall though, business is moving and been really communicating with sellers to let them know people are still selling, people are still buying. So. I think the communication piece has been really important. It seems to me that the market picked up last Monday. And you know, this Monday that we just passed, everything was just standstill. It was actually kind of nice. We took a little bit of a, you know, it was kind of, everybody was a little bit afraid. And then all of a sudden last Monday when the weather was so lovely, the phone started ringing again. Next thing you know, we were getting in contract. Next thing you know, people were saying, let's just list the house and let's get moving. So this week has been significantly better than last week and I'm anticipating a better week next week. What do you guys think? Trish, I am so excited to hear you say that because we are seeing exactly what you're talking about at the title company. We're seeing that exact same trend. Um, in our overall operation for the four counties, uh, Sonoma County being our, our largest um, marketplace, and we do about 50% of the business in this area. So I'll kind of use some stats from, you know, I think we've got some good for some really good data on that, but overall for the uh, four county region, you know, looking at our purchase transactions from January to February, we were up month over month about 1%. February to March, and you know, we went shelter in place mid-March, we went down about 8%. March to April is where we took our biggest hit. In April, we were down 38% on our open orders for purchase transactions. May month to date, we're up over 100% on the open orders. If you take out the pre-listings on those and actual bona fide transactions, um, it's probably 20, we're up over 27% um, just based on the numbers. So, and I agree, it's like it just opened up as soon as the weather um, got nicer. I also think a lot of it had to do with the shelter in place um, guidelines started to loosen up. You know, we had a long period of time where the realtors, unfortunately, were not considered essential business. So it really had an impact and people weren't sure how to navigate through that. But now that some of those restrictions have been lifted, you are considered essential business. We're certainly seeing the activity picking up um, on our end. That's great. Like one term I, I heard recently from uh, during the ARIA Global Electric Summit, I think it was one of the CEOs, I think it was from Angels and Valkers. They're, they're saying it's not really back to normal, but it's back to business. So it's really cool to see that you guys are all like back more, more so in action than you were a month ago. Um, Craig, how, how's your right now different from six weeks ago? I would dovetail uh, into what everybody else has to share. Uh, the one thing I would tell you is I think and everybody would probably agree. I think we're a lot more focused right now. I think the distractions of back and forth in and out of the office, a lot of us are you know, members of ser service clubs and whatnot, and we do a lot of uh, activities outside of real estate that contribute to our overall business. I think there's a lot more focus. I think there's been a lot of um, relationship um, uh, building or enhancing, call it what you will. And Kimberly, don't worry, the inventory is coming. I think all of us probably on this panel, we've all got six, eight, 10, 12 listings that are in the process of getting ready. If it's any indication, you talk to the photographers and they say, wow, we are really booked out. So I think that's the indication that the inventory absolutely is coming. We know quarter two is typically inventory time. It has been historically, if you go back and look at the data, I think there's just a little bit of a flat spot or a pause, but I think it's going to be all hands on deck very shortly. It's coming. We will be working. We're just going to be doing 12 months of business within a 10 month time period. It's not, it's not that big of a deal for us. We just had uh, uh, Daniel join us. Hi, Daniel. I want to give a quick intro and maybe uh, so the first question we're working on right now is what has been different now than like the first week of shelter in place in your business? and how, how are things done differently? 
Daniel, you're on mute. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm unmuted. So, uh, no, I feel that uh, right now I'm busy showing a lot of San Francisco families, young families, uh, kind of high-end properties because they have it in their mind that they want to uh, make the wine country rather than their second home or of their primary home. And they're realizing they can work from remote. And um, so right now it's just busy showing people what, you know, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million gets them. So it's just uh, education time right now. A lot of the showings I find. So a lot more showings now than, uh, well, now it's also essential, right? Or, and occupied properties. All right. So are, are most of the homes in, in your markets uh, vacant or, or is it typically only occupy or half, half? Well, it's interesting. Our inventory really dropped when we were not able to show occupied homes. And I was thinking that this week we would have a whole bunch of new in inventory coming on, you know, stuff that uh, was taken off because it was occupied. And then also the stuff that people are just thinking of putting on the market and they finally now can do it. But it's interesting. There's not that much has come on this week, at least in Sonoma Valley. So but anyways, I, I've got a couple of things that are forthcoming next week. So who knows? Maybe next week will be the week that everyone does this. But also, I think people were starting to get stir crazy. They just had to get out of the house. So San Francisco people are driving up even during the uh, shelter in place, you know, after being in the home for how many weeks with your kids bouncing off the walls. You had to get out of the house. So, yeah, it's been busy. It's strange. It's, it's, it's interesting. Can anyone else have comments on the difference between now and uh, six weeks ago? I'd love to share. Um, I'm just curious as to what the panel thinks about this. One of the things that we are certainly committed to is um, following the guidelines and being part of the solution, not the problem. And I'm curious if any of you are getting this. It seems like um, we're at least, again, talk about gratitude. We're, we're grateful to be super busy and showing and listing and, and just, it seems like, yeah, we had a week pause and here we are again. With that being said, it seems like when we go to clients' houses, we're trying to adhere to all the rules. And even the clients are sort of pushing back and saying, no, just come on in. You don't need to wear gloves. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. And um, we're not going to do it that way. And we're going to explain to them and educate them and say, here's why we're doing it. Um, and it's for your protection. But I'm just curious if any, anybody else is seeing that. And also how the client tends to, you start with a six foot distance. And all of a sudden that starts to get smaller and smaller. And you're just walking backwards and you almost get run over by a car because you're really walking <laughs> That's, that's, that's a great segue into um, let's, the next question. Like, so everyone here is in different markets slightly. Everyone has different requirements and perception. And you guys have a different seller base. Like what, maybe Trish, you can start because you're on my top left. Like what, what are you requiring for, your, uh, to, for buyers to come and see your properties? Uh, you know, we know what the, the piece stuff is and what are, what's your seller perception and what are they okay with? Uh, the first week people were being uh, kind of ignoring it and they were just all of a sudden showing up like they weren't supposed to do. And uh, so we started calling and just saying, you know, we really want to be respectful. We want to just be careful, what protect all parties. And so we're being very strict about that. We have little kits in the houses in case they don't have booties, in case they don't have masks, in case they don't have something. And then uh, we're just really encouraging all of the realtors to follow the guidelines and make sure that our sellers are safe. The last thing we want is any issues. You know, we just, we want to protect all parties and we want to sell these houses. So we're just trying to be as strict as possible and providing whatever forms that we need. So in case somebody doesn't have it, but we really want to sell houses. Yeah, I, I'm finding the same thing. And what I just say is, cause I'm like, oh, we don't need to do all that. I'm like, oh yes we do. I, and I'll say, I'm so grateful that we're, we're allowed to show property. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize that. Please join me. And I've got gloves, masks, booties, everything there. I've got signs, fun ones, you know, but being very, very clear. And um, yes, Jerry, same thing. Being sitting across from somebody with a mask on and with a, from a seller and finding myself backing up. And then also educating our agents that watch people. If they're backing up, it's because you're getting into their space and we, there's different spatial requirements now to pay attention to the body language. Are, are you guys at all of your uh, owner occupant showings? 
yeah. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, like during, we, we had a listing coming up in Oakland um, Thursday. And on, on the, that Saturday, we actually had 14 different showings, all half hour grids. And some people kind of walked by. So we were, we were at the house for seven hours. I flipped, we switched twice between me and my partner, but we, we made sure to practice social distancing, one, only one group inside. It, it gets pretty, pretty crazy. Um, anyone else have to share about, you know, whether Jerry, your, your screen's up for me, Jerry, uh, what are some of the requirements you're, you're putting in place and some feedback on that? The only thing I would add in is that it's, it's incumbent upon us for it to be, it's not a negotiable item. I um, too have the same thing. I put the kits together. I hand them the kits. They're in a little plastic Ziploc bag and maybe they're saying, well, I don't need the mask because I already have mine. Well, it's an early Christmas gift, but this is non-negotiable. We need to be uh, ensure that we're keeping our distance because the other thing that I brought up and you can see this when you're showing property, there are cars driving by and people are driving slowly watching what we're doing and i will tell yes. you they are quick to pull the plug and put a phone call in and you know try to say that we're not working within the compliance so it's for for me it's not negotiable and if you set that tone right away get to your get to your showings 10 or 15 minutes early have the door open have the little kits ready to hand out to the clients uh, the other thing i would say is and, and i know all of us are doing this it's incumbent upon us uh to ensure that uh these items are here. Don't expect the seller, the seller's agent to have them for you when you show up. I mean, it's common sense, but I've, I've heard where some agents have shown up saying, oh, well, the listing agent didn't do it. Well, you know, come on, we need to take responsibility for our own selves and protect our, our clients. To piggyback on that, um, just from a title company and uh, perspective, we put things into place as well, Kenny, um, over the last several weeks, and we have very, very strict guidelines that are challenging for, for most people. We were considered essential business from the get-go, but with very strict guidelines. We had to move 75% of our staff working remotely and making sure that they were working remotely in a secure environment. 25% of the staff is still on site. Um, our employees are not allowed to have printers at home, scanners, copiers, everything still has to be printed um, directly to the office for security um, reasons. And so we have locked the doors to all of our offices because people were still um, popping in. Our offices are open by appointment only. And we had to get um, stricter based on the guidelines that we were given that Unfortunately, the realtors cannot come to the signings. The lenders cannot come to the signings. It's only the people that actually have to sign the documentation. People have taken it a step further. Some lenders are now allowing us to do um, loan docs um, via DocuSign to limit the amount of time that the people are actually in front of the mobile notary or coming into our office for signings. Mobile notaries have definitely um, skyrocketed. People are utilizing that more. We put the clear plexiglass in our conference rooms um, to keep a shield. We do ask everybody to wear a mask um, that is in the office. Our notaries and our um, employees are wearing gloves and masks when they're meeting with people. And we're asking the same of them. And we also go through a questionnaire if someone's coming into our office, asking if they've had any symptoms. Um, there's a whole protocol that we're all following. So it is very different um, than it was prior mid-March, as you guys all know and are experiencing. But we're fig we figured it out and we're making it work. So people are still getting their documents signed. They're still closing escrows. We're just doing it a little bit differently now. Thank you for all the booties. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the cutest ones, right? The, the black colored ones. <laughs> and they're in very limited supply. So we apologize, yeah. but the entire world is ordering them. <laughs> Anyone else want to comment on um, like what, what are your minimum requirements? I mean, these are all really, really great feedback I haven't heard yet. So any insight on that? Can I throw one in real quick? Sure. So the other one that's been challenging for me is the, um, the trades. So the people that go into the house, for example, I have somebody going in to do some, uh, some sheetrock repair and he comes in, I explain everything to him, but then his right-hand person comes in 15 minutes later, and if I don't pause him at the door, he's gonna walk in with no booties, no mask, no anything, mm -hmm. just right into the house while there's a tenant living in this property Ooh. who's super sensitive to all this and she's being very smart. And that, that's been another, another issue for us because we are, 
because we are so full service. There's so many layers and we want to make sure that everybody complies. So it's just another one. I don't know if any of you deal with that as well. What about peds for everybody? The advisor? Yeah, everybody, that's the given. No, I mean, as far as compliance for every single time somebody enters the property, so you go into contract, everybody. everybody. It's, yeah, really staying on top of that. It's a lot of paperwork um, and yet critical. I agree. Agreed. And how are you guys handling um, some of the showings? Like the, the I, I don't know how much listing inventory each person has here, but like how are you handling that? Now we're going back to old like traditional. We had pick. I I I currently have eleven listings in the market, and the, between the PED, call, people texting, "Hey, have you got my P Confirming that you received my P. Hey, can I show this day? It's it's just honestly been dry, I haven't had been driving crazy like this before in a while. Better have a good assistant. And it's <laughs> if you're doing that on your own, I feel for you. Well, I, well the, one, the thing I have in my, on my um, remarks, it says to call my co-listing agent. It says call there and call, call, call there, but yet people call me and it, that, that's the hard part I'm trying to get over right now. Organization. Uh, Organization and systems. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. Amen, Trish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cool. Uh, next question, like, what, what are you guys doing to adapt in this environment? And like, one thing we can talk about, uh, I didn't have on this later, that would be a great question. Like, where do you see the post-COVID environment and, and what things will stick and what things will change back to where they are or some form of that? I think the PED form, the required PED form will be around for a while and will become part of every transaction for sure and every showing. I think it will probably if here has the exact answer to that, then they the winner of the year. I don't think anybody really knows what's going to happen. And I hope it doesn't get worse. I hope it gets better. I hope that um, that this doesn't become the new normal and that we get, you know, that something great happens each time we've had one of these crises we've all think, you know, what's going to happen here. But I just think that we're a really unique industry. And I think I'm hoping that things aren't as strict as they are now and that we lighten up a little bit and things get better. Yeah, and that's why I think it's super important that we do follow all the rules because, you know, everyone's eyes are on us and it's like the, the red arrow. You know, if you have too many red arrows, all of a sudden the county jumps in and says you can't have any more red arrows. It's the same thing with this year. If you have a tenant who has a health issue and, uh, you know, you're letting people in without uh, following the guidelines, yeah, they're going to turn you in too many complaints all of a sudden now we won't be able to show occupied homes again so we just have to play by the rules look who's here come look look who's there this is christine creno she's our guest uh, speaker <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's funny one thing i will say it was interesting uh in one week I had a, a house that I thought was worth about 700000 and we put it on as coming soon at seven fifteen, just to test the market, and we got like an incredible number of phone calls, and I told my clients, I said, this is insane, let's just go live, and so anyways, on Easter Sunday, we ended up having like, like eight showings, and the property went for seven seventy five, dollars all cash, 10-day closing. At the same exact time, I have a, a, a beautiful listing that comes on at three eight. And a buyer comes in 800,000 under asking and the cover letter is about how we've got the new great depression on the way. And, uh, you know, uh, when I said, well, guess what, we're going to be countering back at 25,000 under because it's just the first day on the market. And she said, uh, do you really uh, want to risk us walking away? I said, yeah, go show them properties in the $2 million range and then you'll be able to get something. But uh, it's <laughs> interesting the perception, you know, if you go out there saying that it's doom and gloom, you kind of make it into that. Sometimes it's a, self-fulfilling prophecy. Like if you wake up in the morning and you say there's going to be a crappy day, guess what? It is going to be a crappy day. It's hey, Daniel, to piggyback, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Oh, to piggyback on what you're saying, how many of you have had somebody right at the onset of this call you sort of that bottom feeder investor looking for, some, yeah. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I'm all cash. I'm all cash. Oh, I'll give you 50 cents on the dollar. No, I'll buy it first. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. What I'm seeing also, though, it's interesting is there is more cash because the jumbo category is really challenging. 
Yes. Um, they're not, you know, not allowing any seconds behind and minimum of 20%. However, if you're pricing it at a little bit of a value, I had 25 showings in two and a half days. I was there, talk about, I think Daniel, uh, maybe Kenny was saying it. I was there seven hours, <laughs> just showing, showing, multiple offers, over asking. And I had that happen, this was in the one seven, and I had it happen in the 700. Um, so there really are buyers out there, but they're smart. They're not gonna overpay. Have you, have you guys seen the frequency of showings um, start happening more, a lot more recently? Definitely this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's picked up. Yeah, this, uh, this week alone, so I use showing time, which I love, um, mostly for its statistics, but we had 108 showings this week. Wow. Our I mean, uh, how many listings, roughly? Uh, 38. A lot of PEADs, <laughs> which by the way, uh, back to that, um, we actually just hired a VA to manage all of COVID related things. So all PEADs, making sure that it's in compliance, calling every, um, every agent and making sure that they got the showing instructions, um, doing a virtual check on making sure that um, our, our runner knows if we're low on inventory for our bags and things like that. So it's so worth it just to not have to I think Elizabeth was saying, did you, call, having those calls, did you get my PAD? Just confirming that you got my PAD. Um, did you get this? Did you get that? Like we just have one person handling it all. Christy, you had asked about the marketing of virtual open houses and, and, and whatnot. And I'd be curious to hear what everybody's doing with the virtual market. Yeah, we have virtual tours on, on most of our listings, probably about 80%. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of agents out there that are actually at the property doing like a Zoom meeting type of format. And I'm just wondering how, if anyone else here on the panel is doing that and how it's working. Yeah, we, we've been pretty successful with that and getting some reasonable attendance. And I think a lot of it is also to, to share, uh, we all know this, we're also explaining to our sellers that that we're not lazy uh, marketeers, that we're out there working hard for them and getting their properties out there. We're using interesting uh, images and video clips to uh, garner attention, really uh, unusual to what we were doing a month ago. But one thing that I'm really proud of, and some of you may be the same, we were ahead of this curve by three, four years. I mean, we, we've never been selective as to which property gets videographed. We videograph every single property. Originally, I used to pay for these service and it, you know, it was $500 to a thousand, sometimes $2,000, depending on the property, to get professionally videographed and, and a photo package. And then we have a, then my wife and I are very fortunate to have a highly creative son who's kind of slid into that role over the, the last two years. And a CNN producer said the other day that his videos are some of the best videos that he's ever seen on real estate. So we have a full-time in-house uh, videographer and photographer, which by the way, for all of you there, he's gonna go independent uh, <laughs> in about four weeks because other agents have been wanting to use them and I've been courting him. So if any of you wanna use Jerry, I'm gonna plug him because he is, uh, you can go to YouTube and get bored with hundreds and hundreds of videos. He, he's pretty amazing, you guys. Cool. And he'll go to Oakland. <laughs> One of the things that we've done is um, group open houses. So gone to three or four properties, video of each one, then taken market stats and Zoom and then live on Facebook so that there's multiple properties versus just one. And just trying to, as, as Jerry's talking, just mix things up, do things different, stay ahead of the curve, come up with ideas, you know, um, so that our clients see that. Um, we can change, we can shift. Well said, if you're creative and if you have fun with pivoting, it's a real interesting time to, to dig in. It's really interesting things come up. I saw, um, I saw the best executed uh, virtual open house this weekend by Kyle Whistle at the Whistle Realty Group. He's using a tool called StreamYard. StreamYard is, um, 
it has a back room. So like, a, like a, imagine you're doing a show and you're in a green room, right? So what he's doing, he's loading, he's doing the, he's logging it into his phone and his computer. So he's hosting the open house on the couch at the home on the computer, but then he'll flip between that and have a gimbal and his, and his phone to walk around the property. A lot of times it's flipping between two things. And then, and when he gets back to his seat, he, he can load up a slide deck when he's mentioning here's a park near here or, or here's, you know, the uh, commute somewhere easy commute and he can load up the images on there. So he, when he's referencing something, he can pull it up. So he's kind of jumping in between using his phone and his computer by uh, co-hosting himself, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Very few people can sell real estate well and do that as well. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're into a whole new world of skills. I don't think that was on the test, was it? Yeah, I just, I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that one to Jerry Jr. and I would need him at that open house. And yeah, where is Kyle Whistle out of? I like to look it up. Uh, San Diego, and he has a sample of that on on his Facebook group, the Whistle Realty Group. So it's just pretty much like two people logging in. You you log into devices and you flip between them. One could be to your screen and one's walking around. And that, 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 that was just pretty cool because then it makes things more interactive. I really appreciate it. So what else is everyone you know, doing to adapt to the market? I don't know if anyone's had this experience so far, but I had a couple of uh, virtual showings where I couldn't get connected. So we've started sharing a guest Wi-Fi code with all visitors. Um, we have a couple of country property um, showings that just did not go well at all in and out. We couldn't get on FaceTime, couldn't get on Zoom. Um, so just a quick tip, if you guys have any uh, remote properties or shoot, sometimes even in downtown, you, you have a hard time getting a signal if you have a certain carrier, but sharing those Wi-Fi codes up front. I think our clients are becoming much more techie. I think they were uh, a lot less techie and now people are extremely comfortable with Zoom. I think all of their social groups are now meeting on Zoom. So I think that in the future, we're going to have a really uh, much more techie group. So all these really great new ideas, I think are going to be really helpful. And I think maybe the job of the real estate agent might be a little bit easier rather than, you know, we can do so much more remotely than we could before. So we're learning every day. There's something new every day. Would you guys agree? Definitely. Absolutely. We just all learned something new right now that we're going to go check out as soon as we're done. <laughs> The one thing that I would say, you guys, it's, uh, you know, last year was, I'm going to, without looking at everything and going back a lot of years, because back in the old days, I think, uh, I know we used to sell more transaction wise. Uh, we were always over a hundred transactions a year. However, now we're less transactions, but last year, I think we had our record year for the entire time I've been in the business. I believe that this year we'll be down I might exaggerate, but we might be down 60, 70%. And 30% is still something that we're grateful for because off of a record year, 30% is, again, based on a referral-based business and clients coming back to us, that's something that we just don't take for granted. But the one thing that a client of mine just told me, and I have a great listing up on Monticello Road, here under $3 million, and, and these are high-level executives. He was with Motorola. I think she was with Macy's. And, and she did a seminar in front of um, a, a, you know, a powerhouse of a group. And, and one thing that she said in her seminar that I watched on YouTube back when she was working, because she's retired now, she said she learned something from her dad and, uh, and the phrase was called tuck and roll. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, that served me so well during these times. Uh, this is exactly what we do. We tuck and roll, we adapt, we change, uh, we, we do different things. And and all of us have had uh, adversity. Some of us, uh, and you know who you are, are going through adversity right now, uh, even beyond COVID. And uh, just tucking and rolling is exactly what we're doing during these times. And we're all gonna we're all gonna be fine. And if we all have the spirit of integrity and in helping others, it, we're in a great place. Jerry, to piggyback on what you said uh, when you first started this, these comments, um, talking about the, the business and the shift in it, 
and you know the numbers that I was giving you earlier were kind of month over month since January. But if we go back to April of 2019 and looking at the purchase transactions versus April of 2020, our purchase order opens were down 65 and a half percent. So I'm thrilled getting back to what Trish was saying earlier, just even seeing this week, we're already starting to see an increase. We're not there yet, but the tuck and roll. Yeah, I, I got that uh, term, became very familiar with that term during the, the Tubbs fires and yeah. realizing what we needed to do. I mean, for our area, that, that was our biggie. That's where we are like, oh my gosh, how, how do we navigate through this? We've got offices that are closed. We've got people that are, uh, you know, how do we start navigating through some of this stuff and looking at how we're going to, provide our services to the real estate community in a different way. And then we had power outages and then we had the Kincaid fire. And in addition to offices being closed, we, you know, over 80,000 of our residents were displaced from their homes. And so just when we think we're okay, we're finally through all of that. And now we're going to go into to something different. We get hit with COVID. And I, and I think we did have a, a little bit, um, we were a little bit better prepared probably than people in a lot of other areas because of what we had already been through for the last few years. But I do think that it's, you know, moving forward, we're all looking at how we're gonna be doing things differently. Jen Hall, who is our county manager, she and I were talking just before getting on this call. Uh, we're gonna be working today, uh, figuring out and actually having to come up with a plan on how we're, we are going to reinitiate getting um, our workforce back in the office. It's not gonna be just opening up the doors and moving forward. We're gonna be working very closely on putting a plan together um, between now and this weekend and looking at how that's going to look different going into June. So it's, um, but that tuck and roll, it's, we, we learned that early on. And I think um, this is just another example of where we've had to, where we've had to go with it. Mm -hmm. I think it's imperative too, that we keep this in perspective. 12 years ago, we were sitting down with sellers who were four and $500,000 underwater on their homes. And we were talking about short sales and foreclosures and there was a real divide between the haves and the have-nots. There were investors buying them up while there was people losing their homes. A mask and gloves and booties are suddenly not such a big deal. And I think this is a small blip. The other thing is it's really um, comforting. This is not a haves and have-nots. We're all in this together. And there's a real collective uh, momentum building. I truly feel we're, we're through the middle of the tunnel. We can see the light at the backside and we just all need to be prudent and responsible. We will get there. I think I talked to Kenny. You just brought something up that reminded me of a question that I think it was you, Kenny, that asked me or somebody else called me the other day to ask me what else that I think could, could be added to this topic. And it's, you oh, know, yeah. right. Well, I, I, first person I asked, like, um, that's, let's save that question for a little bit later. I feel like yeah, that's gonna, buddy, I guess, that, that was my, one of my favorite questions. Um, well, thank you. Uh, okay, let's, let's hear it. So, uh, Laura uh, Fitchy in the audience asks, you know, people are interested in the, what are you guys are doing to lead gen? Because, you know, this is a way different environment right now. How are you continuing to get more business and stay in touch with your clients or future clients? I'd share, this is opportunity time for us. People are looking at us as the as the trusted professionals and i think those of us who have you know been around for a little while and i've worked with all of you and everybody gets it done and gets to the truth quickly and everybody is proactive and not reactive as far as on this panel uh, I, I this is the time to be reaching out to our clients however we need to contact them pick up the phone that thing still works uh, text messages email reach out to them, let them know what's going on in the market. We're all hearing the same three or four questions out there. The main question is, gosh, what are prices gonna do? Buyers are hesitant to pull the trigger because they think there may be a reduction in price. Sellers are concerned that there may be a reduction in price. My personal feeling is, you know, we're in such a, um, we've had a supply problem for so many years, we're gonna to continue to have a supply problem. This is not a real estate uh, focused recept recession. This is a, you know, a virus that has, has disrupted our world here. Um, so I think it's a perfect opportunity to reach out to our clients, give them an update on the market, calm their fears and be the, uh, be the voice of reason, you know, be the shining light in, in maybe a little bit of darkness. It's opportunity time for us. And they're home. Yeah. 
very easy to get a hold of right now. Um, I think to you know follow up with what Craig said, it's uh, more than anything being calm. If I'm calm and I'm confident and I'm clear about what's going on, then that's what I'm sharing with clients and they feel it and then they're calm. And I found that, um, especially when we went in, we had a few listings on, sellers getting very uptight and then just talking them down. Like, it's okay, this is what we're gonna do, you know? And so education, I just, education is just a big component to my lead generation right now. Calling people up, hey, how are you doing? You know, are you still employed? Is there anything I can do? Coming from a place of caring, not, hey, do you wanna buy your house or sell your house? But really, you know, finding out what's going on with them and then naturally segueing into the conversation and letting it lead where it needs to go. And being, I mean, being stuck at home or stuck in the office, wherever you guys are, like, what are, what are you guys doing to generate new business and new conversations to attract more people to talk to you? You know what I'll say? It's, it has been interesting just over the last three or four weeks, I've gotten, and probably most of us have, um, referrals from surprising areas. And, I, and when I say that, I mean unexpected areas. Uh, referrals that may have been working with somebody else, but during these turbulent times, they wanna work with somebody who is, you know, really knows the market, knows the data, knows what to do. So I think some of the, um, you know, the lower level or the newer agents are gonna really, really have to work hard uh, to keep up because right now is a, is a time in our business where, you know, if you're not willing to work hard and be a student of the industry, you might fall off the back. Yeah, piggyback off that, I've actually, you know, like we're gonna see a huge decline, probably 25% of agents leave the business. That's what happened in the last recession. And actually, when actually went down seven years before it picked back up, but I always recommend it to agents, like this is probably the worst time to be an agent. Uh, so you want to come in, you got to work extra, extra hard to just to catch up to even someone uh, that's been doing it for a while. Once you're past three year market in the real estate industry, that usually you're pacing and you can kind of stay in the business afloat. I love, I can see that you're a total stats guy. Um, I'm only going to push back on that one because I think it's the best time ever to become an agent. If you can survive this, you're in it for the long game. If you can't be creative and if you can't figure this one out, maybe you shouldn't think about it. Uh, are you, are you got, who, who here is hiring in case the audience wants to, audience wants to join the team leader? Always. Always. Yeah, most people here would probably partner up with the right person. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth, you commented about um, a lot of your lead generation now is coming from your existing um, client base. How many of you are actively currently right now doing internet lead generation? I am. Well, just, yeah. Yeah. Through, through our listings, through what we're offering, through, you know, we're, I think we're all doing everything. Would you guys all agree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing everything you can. I noticed that um, Vivian had asked the question, Vivian Chia um, in the chat room is wondering, um, and I, I'm wondering the same question, what advice would you have for the newer agents? I know Kenny was saying that right now, you know, not a good time to, to become a, a realtor. Jerry, you saying, it, hey, if you can survive this, you can survive anything. And, you know, we've said that during different crisis, um, you know, if you get in at that time, what advice would you guys give for newer agents um, getting in right now? I would share just, and Jeremy and I talked about this when this whole COVID thing just first started, the fact that, you know, hey, we're going to be fine here. We're just going to keep hunkering down and working hard. I think 95% of the battle is being willing to work. I think too many people want to work 30, 40 hours a week and make a couple hundred thousand dollars. It's not reality. At least it's, you know, not in, not in our market where your median price is about $660,000. So I think it's a hard work. It really can happen. And then I think right beneath that is you need to understand the, the market. You need to understand the inventory. You need to know the trends. You need to be able to communicate the trends and you don't have to be a, a, a an ex 
economics major, you just have to know some of the key variables that are happening within the market and be able to communicate that with confidence because confidence will build momentum. The momentum will build the business. And, you know, coming new into it, you don't have to do 50 deals a year. You can do five, six, eight, 10 deals and make yourself a half decent living. And then it'll grow from there. Well, on, the, on the prep call, yes, you brought that up. So let, let's talk about like um, inventory, knowing market data. What, what's the mar market uh, new listings pending in your area. And then the second step as a question is where do you see prices going in the next one month, three months, and at the end of the year, Craig? I see price being extremely consistent. I see a little bit of a, uh, maybe a 5% decrease currently. And that's because a lot of the contracts that were in place, there were some negotiation that was happening. I think sellers were a little bit, little bit more receptive uh, to just keep their their deal moving through the pipeline, not knowing what tomorrow was going to bring. Um, but again, our our supply of inventory has been 2.3 months of supply, because the number of contracts went down significantly last month. It shot up to 3.8 months of supply. My gut is that the inventory is going to come on, and the buyers are going to be coming out to buy. So I don't see our market um, taking an incredible hit because we are so undersupplied and we have been so undersupplied. So what has been kind of one of our biggest, uh, you know, hurdles, uh, especially when working with buyers, I think is going to end up being the saving grace for um, our overall market. I can tell you that uh, I've reached out to a lot of my clients who are talking about selling. And I said, you know, we've been in this holding pattern long enough. Let's just pull the trigger and let's just get going. You know, we're not going to wait until the uh, shelter in place ends. I mean, who knows when that's going to end? And we got to just get, 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 get back on track and put the inventory out there. But it is interesting, though. Also, you know, here it is. Uh, I've taken on some listings that uh, didn't sell last year. And then now we get a multiple bid situation. And all of a sudden, the sellers think that it's now it's a seller's market completely. It's like, you know, these extremes. It's, you know, just price it appropriately you know, play fair. And um, you know, I think the inventory is going to move. Napa County um, from same month, April of 2019, April of 2020, um, or I should say city of Napa specifically, 60 sold in April, 103 last April. So that's a 42% decline. Um, however, our median price has gone up by 1.8%. We've gone from 725 to 735. So, um, you know, and even with our listings that have come on in the last week, we're really shy of, but there's a lot in coming soon. And I think Jerry said it or somebody else said it is, a, there's a lot of listings that we have that just haven't hit the market. And I think we're going to see now with some of the, like there's the phase two opening that we're going to start seeing a lot more come on and the buyers are there. So I want to show you guys uh, something pretty cool on, on Google trends. You can look up search terms. And then if you see this at the at nationally, the term buy a home or buy a house uh, floats around maybe 62 million um, searches a month. In the last one month, it's, it's almost doubled. I, the red line is house. I think people are tired of living in their condos, mm -hmm. in quarantine mode. But this is a record. This is almost double what people normally search for. And so it's it's there's a lot of pent up demand uh, out there. And then Zillow also has this thing. There's nothing specific. Zillow, Zillow only has San Francisco and San Jose. But um, for both those markets, San Francisco and San Jose, uh, as soon as shelter in place um, came in, the the amount of searches in those areas had dropped 30% to 35%, but now it's been steadily climbing. And then in the last two weeks, now the traffic year over year is roughly 15 to 20% higher. So there people are just have more time to think about everything and anything. So I think that just from the activities and um, what buyers are doing, I think there's a lot of pent up demand, but it really, you know, that's, but they also have more time to be on internet. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about that. Let's go, um, let's go to next. So Craig had a great, um, is it Craig? No, I think Jerry had a great question. We'll, we'll lead into it right now. Uh, what are you guys going to do if worst case scenario, there is a second wave coming? Cause that's, that could very likely happen. We're, we're kind of loosening guidelines, but you don't know, you know, other states have loosened, but there's no 
no telling or not enough uh, days yet to really have facts from that. I'm, li I'm living like I know there's going to be a second wave. Mm -hmm. So I'm just preparing for it. I'm preparing for it financially, emotionally, and uh, for our family. Not anything as I'm hopeful that it's not anything as bad as this first one and as strict, but I, I just live like there will be one. And I think we're going to be, we're better positioned this time because people are going to know that it's, that it's temporary, that there's an end to it. But it's gonna, you know, I don't wanna be caught off guard personally. Jerry, I think you raise a good point. And that also makes me smile a little bit because you're talking about a 60% decrease and I'm thinking, no way. But if you are thinking a second wave, sure. I also think it's, it's caused all of us to realize, um, you know, kind of how quickly disruption can happen in our industry. And, uh, you know, if we do this right and work hard, we can, we can make a fairly decent income. And I think it's kind of an eye opener to all of us to not be living like some of the realtors and mortgage professionals were living in 2004, 2005. Um, I think all of us are putting a few, uh, putting a few acorns away in, in the event that there's a long winter. And I think it's, it's caused all of us to reevaluate and be really prudent about what we're doing and how we're doing it and the reserves we're putting away. And I think the other thing that we're gonna have is because these, uh, some of these other states are opening, I'm paying very close attention. What's gonna work, what's not gonna work so that we can very quickly adjust um, because I believe there will be a second wave. It just, I mean, it just makes sense that there will be. And um, one of the things that I've been involved in a lot of different masterminds, but reduce your expenses by 20%. You just go and you just do it in every area. You look at your bank statements, you look at your credit card statements, look and see those monthly subscriptions that you forgot that you even had. There's many, many places to be able to cut back and you know live beneath your means right now. Really always, but certainly right now, it makes a difference in the long run. Yeah, I agree. I was laughing because that um, that was the first thing we did is we printed out all of our credit card statements, all of our bills, and we said, what's a necessity? What can we cut? And there were so many things that were on this auto subscription and auto renew that I was, I had to look up. I was like, what is that? What did I sign up for at one point? And it's true. We were able to slash, you know, a thousand dollars a month just by getting rid of some of those subscriptions. We also started doubling down on everything that we do. You know, we're working twice as hard expecting half the results. So when we're working twice as hard expecting half the results, if we even get half, we're happy. Um, I'm, I'm really lucky and happy to report that my numbers are not down at all year over year. Um, we're actually up. We did 38 transactions in March. Um, would have been 39 if Jerry could have gotten his shit together, but you know. <laughs> it, went, it went a little long. <laughs> So yeah, no, I totally get it. Yeah. How about how about um, so so price Daniel? Where do you see pricing going on in in your market? Uh, one month out, three months out, end of the year. Um, I think it's pretty steady. I I really believe that uh, the price. I don't. It, it's interesting. I'll tell you one thing. When I when I go out for a listing presentation, I tell uh, the sellers. I said, you know, we're all kind of figuring this out all together, and you know, I can give you a range on what I think the price is going to be. But if we're going to be spending three weeks preparing the property for market, you know, I think the price is going to be, you know, no more than this and no less than this. But, you know, right before we go on the market, then let's, let's see what our competition is. I think everything's changing from moment to moment and we just have to be nimble, you know? So uh, that's why I, I tell people. And also it's funny, I've also told people, you know, I've been in the business long enough to see the highs and the lows. And uh, some of the stuff that we used to deal with you know, we may have to start dealing with again, like uh, seller financing. Mm -hmm. I received uh, a couple offers uh, in the last two weeks that had uh, seller financing. And this is like big seller financing, not little numbers. It's like, wow, you know? So just have to uh, be nimble and just uh, see what else is happening around you and, and uh, respond accordingly. And yes, I'm looking at my credit card bill right now. I normally, I just run my finger down this time i'm like looking at every single expense it's on my desk right here and this is auto look at that 179 dollars for something it's like it's an auto thing and i just like never take the time to look into it so this month i am <laughs> hey daniel we're all saving a lot of money on uh 
entertainment restaurants and uh, happy hour. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is honestly amazing. In fact, my wife told me uh, she does all my bills. Thank God. Uh, she said to me, "Oh my gosh, usually our." account monthly end is this and look at it this time i said yeah this is great gas is two dollars and 59 cents at costco we're in good shape here you guys i did a great job cleaning my bathroom yesterday i don't remember the last time i've had to do that and it was humbling it makes me appreciate anybody and everything and, and 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 life is life you get back to that and and you become your um your best bathroom cleaner and everything you do you do as best as you can and and, and this too shall pass and I'm more concerned about the friend that used to come over and, and, and help us with the house and clean the bathroom. I'm more concerned about her and I wish she was able to come here and, and I go in the hole for her. Um, but it's, it, it's brutal, but you just, you just roll up your sleeves and clean a bathroom. I washed my car for the first time and I was sore. Well, that's another one that we better be doing because that car is, our car is gross. Mine's very bad right now. <laughs> Gross. So, so this wasn't a question I was planning to ask, but I think it's appropriate. Like off-market uh, policy, right? It just happened this week. Like, what, what, what's your feedback on that? How are you guys dealing with that? Um, Kenny, we're not. We Barriers isn't clear cooperation, so yeah, we don't we don't participate in clear cooperation. Oh, here. interesting. Yeah. yeah, super interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, the brokers. It, it's because it's a broken broker-owned MLS. Okay. Um, to that, to that, I have to say, um, let me just pull up my stats real quick. With um, COVID, we opened not uh, we wrote nine contracts this week, so opened nine to escrows, and three of them were off MLS. Um, none of them in house; they were all co broke. So, I really think now is you know the time. It's going to be interesting with clear, clear cooperation in other areas, and how that all is going to play out with this situation. Sorry, oh, okay. And that, I think the question came from you that um, that was really great. Uh, we're approaching the hour mark now. So I'll just have this last question before we do just open Q and A or something. Um, this question came from Nicole. If you could tell everyone in the network, friend, family, selling, not selling, buying, not buying, just anyone, what's one thing you'd like to share with everyone on how this has affected your life? How about you, Nicole, uh, your question? Um, well, kind of to Jerry's point, it's been really humbling, you know, washing my car, being sore for three days, cleaning my own house, realizing all of the things that go into running my life that other people do for me. And, you know, despite my housekeeper not coming to clean my house, we're still paying her. Um, we, we need to realize that we're all in this together. I know it's such a common catchphrase right now, but if you really let it like resonate with you, like we're all human and the entire world is going through this and we just kind of need to slow down a little bit and remember that we're all human and we're all, you know, we all have our own things going on on top of all of this too. Really paying attention to being extra kind and um, very conscious of how I'm talking with people and being with people especially on the days where I wake up feeling really grumpy for, for what's going on. For us, we're, uh, we're fortunate enough to live downtown. And a few years ago, we rehabbed an old Victorian house and uh, it's a duplex, so we live downstairs. My son and his wife and our grandkids live upstairs. And three years ago, we never would have imagined that this was gonna be our COVID sanctuary. Um, it, it's really, I mean, we have so much to be grateful for. We've never spent this type of quality time together going for family walks and hanging out and buying her a little doughboy pool. And she's just, I have a one year and a half old granddaughter. Uh, if any of you are on Facebook, you're, you're sick of it, I'm sure. But uh, I, I just love every moment and boy, are we lucky. But is there any, uh, anything else anyone would like to share about how this has affected uh, your life? Well, you know, um, it's interesting. As realtors, we're such a unique breed of people. We, we're resource oriented. We're business people. We're now we're tech geniuses, and we're we're um, we're we refer people and we refer other people's businesses. We support our community. We we're we're everybody's everything. 
And so it's interesting how we are counselors, we're encouragers, we, you know, we work with each other. It's just an amazing industry that we're in. And I think what we're wanting to tell all of our clients is we are going to get through this just like everything else. Somebody said something to me the other day and they said, what would you be doing if before the OA nightmare, you knew what was going to happen and you knew, you know, what, what, how would you react now knowing that? Now we're very different. That was a four year, maybe this will be a four month crisis. We don't know. But I do think that we're trying to be as encouraging as possible, both to other agents, both to new agents, both, you know, we're, we're having to cooperate with each other and our clients. And just like, as you said, Elizabeth, you know, be kind and, and help each other through this. And it's amazing how connected we are to every aspect of society. You know, we're, we're encouraging our plumbers. We're encouraging our babysitters. We're encouraging our restaurants. We're trying to help out in every way we can. So we're a very unique industry, and uh, I'm glad that we're part of it. I saw something on Facebook um, early on. I, well, I say early on. It was probably midway since between middle of March and, and now. And somebody on Facebook had posted, um, we're not all in the same boat, but we're all in the same storm. And that comment truly resonated with me because in my personal life versus my professional life, dealing with so many different things, um, you know, dealing with our employees, there's a lot of fear out there, um, you know, in the industry, dealing with our clients. I mean, to me, our employees are my clients. You guys are clients, but we're all dealing with things at different levels. And, you know, when this first uh, kicked in and we went from, you know, everybody, working and just hustling and the, the year started off so strong and we were so busy too. All of a sudden the, the brakes went on. We were shifting people um, to 75% of our employees working remotely. Our clients weren't sure what was going on. You guys were all trying to navigate through it all. Um, and so it was, it was interesting. We're all dealing with things on a different level. I've got a son who's doing um, online schooling and you know how navigating through that and getting that online. But I, really like what Nicole said, the humbling piece of it. And truly has, I think all of us have become so much more humble through this entire process on a variety of different levels. The part that probably saddens me the most is the intense level of fear and how people are reacting um, to the fear. And that's, I, I wish I had a uh, magic wand that I could take that away for people and make it better we don't we just have to navigate through it and you know have the confidence i think elizabeth or somebody had commented earlier about having the confidence in in moving forward but um humbling was definitely something that i think we've all experienced and nicole i i couldn't agree with you more on that i was on a different mastermind last week and something uh someone said that really res resonated with me i keep thinking about is leaders can't lead in fear so it's really great like seeing you guys here you know, yes, business might be down, but you guys have a strategy or like a plan of action to, to, to ride through the storm. Um, so that's super optimistic. And I, I feel like I've been you know, on webinars as you all have every single week, but the conversation and the level of optimism has been increasing every week. So I, th I think, you know, we're gonna find a new norm and us as leaders are gonna be able to adjust to that more easily than, and we, and every, everyone's watching you guys. They're literally watching you guys and they'll watch this on YouTube later. And they, they're looking for to you, you know, to show to show them the light. Cool. Any any last uh, last remarks? And before we wrap this up, there was one question here. Me. Go ahead. I was just telling Kenny, thanks for hosting. Oh, uh, you're such a good host all the time. I wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there for this weekend. I hope you have a beautiful weekend. You too. Cool. I think Craig, Craig, do you have um, last remarks? Uh, the only thing is uh, there was a question that I saw that we haven't uh, answered. And, and the question was with, uh, with the shift in today's market, uh, what has been your biggest real estate win? For me personally, I, I, you know, <laughs> it's too early to call out a win. I think we're in the middle of the game here. Uh, but what I would say is the biggest win is there seems to have been, be, uh, there seems to be a really nice shift of collaboration. Um, example, what's happening right here. I think it's important to all of us to realize that, you know, every event has a beginning, a middle, and there is an end um, to stay positive and continue being positive, continue being the trusted professionals that we are. Because I, 
humbling as it is, people are paying attention and, you know, hey, we're here to lead. We've been through far worse than this and it will have an end. Absolutely. Uh, I'll say, well, for me, I think that uh, going through this, it kind of helps me kind of uh, maybe uh, put some of my priorities in the right order, you know, and not be so focused, be 100% just only real estate, real estate, real estate. It was weird when it first started, I was watching far too much CNN and Fox and all that stuff. And it was like, whoa, this is like horrible. I was, I was getting super down and I was thinking I'm 51 years old and I haven't done this. I haven't done that. And, you know, here I am, I'm spending all this time working and when am I going to go have fun and do those things that I worked so hard to do? You know, and if I end up getting the virus and dying or something, so anyways, it just it made me kind of try to step back and have more time for myself and do like my doctor said, stay calm and uh, have some balance in my life. I don't no, know. This is a question from, uh, from me as an Oakland resident to you guys. Like, what do you guys do for fun up there? Because you guys are already there. We, we go up there for fun usually. Oh, what do we do up here for fun? <laughs> it's like when I first got into the business, I thought, God, everybody's alcoholics up here in the wine country. Because <laughs> at every meeting, it was always, okay, red, white, what would you like? What would you like? It's like, oh, okay. There's always alcohol at every uh, <laughs> thing. And but, the, uh, the answer, Dan, is always both. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I will say one thing that's weird for me. The outdoor aspect of everything. I know like over where um, Daniel is, the Noma Trails, we're really lucky that we can actually get out and still social distance. Like, you know, I know how um, Oakland streets are. Um, I, I heard they're shutting down streets in Seattle so people can actually get out and walk. But here in Napa and Sonoma, we're so lucky that we have these big giant open space and wide trails and we can actually go out and run and hike and play without coming into contact with people. One thing I will say with the contact with people, the one thing I have a hard time adjusting to is, uh, you know, I'm meeting with a new client to go show them property and we can't ride in the car together. You know, um, normally when we're in together in the car, I'm able to talk to them and ask them, you know, so what do you think about the last house? I won't take it personally. I don't live there. You know, okay, tell me what, you know, what are your push button things? You know, and then, you know, you're showing them the house and you don't know what their reaction is because you know, all you see is their eyes, you know? So it's like, are they smiling? Or are they frowning? It's just, so anyways, it's just weird. I'm just, I'm more hands-on. I like to sit down with my clients and, you know, do the disclosures together. I, I'm not really into this uh, online stuff, but I guess I'm acting like an old person when I say that. So I'm going to have to adjust. But I just, you know, showing property, I find it very bizarre to not be able to be in the car with them and all that stuff. But whatever it is what it is great thanks for sharing that um any last remarks before we, we wrap this up i just want to say thank you to all of you for participating um what an honor it was for fidelity to have you guys all together in a in a Zoom meeting like this and contributing and, and giving us your insight i i really appreciate being part of this so thank you all very very much thank you thank you Thanks for doing all the invites and everything. I mean, this is my first time uh, hosting for someone else and inviting a bunch of strangers. Nicole, I met once, but this is a this is a pretty awesome panel. You guys have a lot of insight. I appreciate all the feedback you got, which I get to bring back to my future next one first. Uh, well, uh, this so this video will be I'm up, I'm gonna upload this as, to up, uh, YouTube as soon as possible, and I'll share the link with Kim and the crew. Uh, and you know, this could be great for you guys to send out to you know your your peers to get the true insight in the market. Uh, and then you know, maybe you guys want to do this in another month. I think it's good to do these spread out because the conversation changes every month. This this mostly has been a lot different conversation. 80% of this conversation is not what I've talked about in the last couple weeks, which is really, really cool. Um, hopefully a second wave never comes and the prices continue to hold. Um, anyways, I am going to wrap this up then. Any last, last final remarks? Thanks, Kenny. Oh, great, great meeting everyone. Hope Thank you, Kenny. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.